Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Where'd you get that mistletoe? It's July! And we're giving away a bunch of gifts to you, the audience! As a sign of our appreciation and need for constant validation. So head on over to our Patreon page. Because every Monday in July, we're going to be posting exclusive content. For free! What are we giving away this week, Maria? This week, we're releasing our first ever video essay about Ruby, Rooster Teeth's original animated web series. If you want to hear us deconstruct the fight scene from this show, frame by frame, head on over to the Patreon for early access. We'll see you over at patreon.com slash chaotic silly. So go check it out right now. For free! I'm going to take this Santa suit off now, Marie. It's so freaking hot. Why are you wearing a Santa suit for an audio-only podcast? I commit, damn it. Now help me get the beard off. (sighs) Merry Christmas in July. All right. We watched The Simpsons, Maria. Yes, this is the first time I've sat down and watched an entire episode of Simpsons. That's not true. I forced you to watch um, Hurricane Nettie, remember? Oh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> so, this what you're saying is the second time. So, what you're saying is I jumped the gun, and now this isn't special. Yes. Damn it. Oh, well. Uh, we watched Last Exit to Springfield, Season 4, Episode 17. Original release date, March 11th, 1993. Uh, Directed by Mark Kirkland, written by Jay Kogan and Wallace Wallardarsky. Wallardarsky. And showrunners for this episode were Al Jean and Mike Reese. Yeah. This show is old. (coughs) We'll get to that. We'll get to that really briefly once we yes. start. Maria. Yes. What happened? So, um, I forget where the episode started. Oh, uh, it started with the, um, the, there's the a lot of plots in this episode. With the dentist? Yes. Yes, it starts with the dentist, I think. Pretty sure it starts with the dentist. Yes. Um, and the dentist is creepy and Oh no, it starts with okay, anyway. Rewind. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> it it starts with uh, like a, a movie scene where where there's like a villain oh, yeah. who poisons the hero. <laughs> um and then they sort of pan out and you see Homer and, and Bart um sitting on on the couch and homer's like nobody's actually that evil bart and then we pan to um what's the name of the guy who runs the plant mr burns ah yes mr burns and um he's basically looking through the contract and um is upset that he has to pay um he has to basically the contract has a bunch of like health benefits for for the workers and equal rights and blah 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 and he's like i wish it was like the old days um and also that he probably killed the union president um maybe allegedly anyway (laughs) um and, and then we sort of cut to the dentist who is um a very creepy dentist, to be honest. Well, not creepy, I would say ominous and uh, um, scary. Uh, and he is basically dealing with one of the patients, and outside, uh, Bart is scaring all the other kids who are waiting in, in the room, um, who are in the waiting room. And it's like it's Lisa's appointment, and ba- she needs braces. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they go back home, and um, Marge tells Homer that Lisa needs braces, and Homer's like, "Oh yeah, that's okay. We have a dental plan in our contract." Um, and the next day, there's a, uh, a union meeting, and uh, basically, the, one of the representatives who's running the meeting says that if 
we are giving away our dent dental plan in exchange for a fear free free beer keg um <laughs> in the meetings and homer takes a moment and realizes oh if they get take away the dental plan then lisa can't get braces and so he starts a a, a sort of a kerfuffle <laughs> he starts a kerfuffle and um basically tears the contract up and burns is like oh i have to negotiate with homer and uh, burns tries to negotiate with homer a few times but homer being homer has a completely different train of thought but in the end um it to burns it seems like he's playing hard to get and eventually burns sort of gives in after shutting down the power um and homer like goes on strike with the union workers and Lisa's singing and Burns is like, oh, I did everything I could and these people are still singing. So he basically gives in and also realizes that Homer is probably not as smart as he thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> but Lisa gets invisible braces. Yes. Instead of the gigantic weird ones. Yes. And thus the status quo has been restored. Yep. <laughs> All right, Maria. So, what did you think? I I enjoyed the episode. It was it was funny. It was the animation is so different, and it's yeah. so like um, I guess I don't know. It it it's not it's not very clean. No, it's There's... smooth. There's no like silly mm. mistakes but but it's not clean no it's and very uh... goofy and fluid <laughs> right there's a reason for that i think right. the, the biggest reason is that the simpsons has very well not very but more complex um cell layers okay than than most of the contemporaries i suppose Right. Where they have a large amount of characters. Like, they have a large cast. A lot of them are on screen at one time. Right. Now, if you imagine a cell, mm -hmm. you know, a, a cell usually is one part of a body sometimes. Right. Or, you know, a, a section of a character, but it's never, usually never the full character. Right. Right. And you layer on the different parts that you need to move or change. Right. Or or the ones that stay static will also be there. Right. Now, when you've got multiple characters on screen, those layers stack up. Plus, you've got background elements and any sort of props that you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what you get is a pretty thick layer of cells that okay. you then take a picture of, redo, get another cell, put it in, and then you have to replace a bunch of other cells. So it's it's a pretty, you know, complex process. And what you get when you've got all of these, like, characters on screen, I don't know if you could see it. There's a little, it's less notable in this episode, but there's a little shadow. Right. And that's caused by the camera, or not the camera, but the light source. Right. That is because shining on the cell. So many layers. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you've got the light source shining on the cell to give it, you know, the perfect amount of lighting. And then you take the picture with the camera, and then you do another cell right. sequence with it. So that what happens when you have multiple cells on top of each other is you get a little shadow. Right, of course. I mean, that that makes sense. Mm. But otherwise, it was very, very good. Like, the writing is very good. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the writing. Yes. Um, Like, the whole scene where Lisa is, like, gassed and <laughs> is, isn't... <laughs> <laughs> the is weird in, uh, sequence. Yeah, that weird sequence. Um, 
Yeah, no, it was it was a fun episode. I I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It was nice to actually see the whole thing develop, rather than watching the funny clips that you you show me. <laughs> that I subject you to on YouTube. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> I I am not subjected to it. I enjoy it, <laughs> but <laughs> it's nice to see the the um the lead up to it, the lead mm. up to the punchlines. Um, right. And Homer just going whoop, 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 whoop at the end. <laughs> that, that's pretty, that's pretty great oh sequence right God. there. And like the small jokes, like like Marge's hair getting chopped off by the, yeah. um, uh, by the by the by the chopper blades. Um, mm-hmm. The goons Lenny. introducing themselves as goons, and Homer <laughs> still opening the door. That's such a great sequence. Just, oh, hired goons. Homer and Homer says it's the it's a good show three, rule of three there. Yeah. They said hired goons. Homer says hired goons, and then they bash him up, and then they take him to Burns's place. Yeah, exactly. Burns is like, sorry, I had to use my hired goons. Uh-huh. Like hired goons. And then the vulture Still. looks exactly like him. Yeah, that was great. That was a great little touch there. I I like that. That was that was very mm. good. The little things. Um, I don't know. It was just a, it was just very fun to watch. Hmm. Um, Homer is so dumb. <laughs> But it's Indeed. nice to see it work out in his favor this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, yeah, usually things don't exactly work out for him in the end. I still feel bad for Marge, though. I mean, she could have done better. Should. I mean, she could have. She could have done better. I mean, there's a lot of things to unpack there with Thomer and Marge's relationship. There's stuff about it and that, that and, shows up in the show? Yeah, sometimes. I think Conan mm. O'Brien said um, the ending to The Simpsons should just be Marge leaving Homer. <laughs> that probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, this episode's pretty um, infamous. In- Why? Not the right word, but like it's it's considered the best episode of The Simpsons by oh, okay. fans. I don't know if I agree it's the best. It's a really, really good one. But I think there are better ones out there. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I mean, I've just again. seen it a million times and <laughs> Again, I, I've only seen this episode, but why is it considered the best one? I don't know. Honestly, I really don't know. It's just, it's all, it's on the top of the list. I see. The, I mean, it was a fun episode. It's a really good episode. I, I empathize with, um, with Lisa um, and mm. having to get braces. Those oh, are the yeah. worst. Braces are the worst. Mm. Did you I have braces you had... as a child, James? No, braces are a scam. They're not. Sometimes they're a scam. Okay, yeah, maybe sometimes, but I mean, I'm I'm glad <laughs> I had braces. My teeth I'm were t- hella crooked. Hmm. Well, there you go. <laughs> there I mean, you go. I a success mean, story. I hated them. They were prison for my teeth. For two and a half <laughs> years. It's not that long. Could have been worse. It's very bad. What I do you mean, mean yeah. it could have been worse? I mean, yes, I know oh, people I mean, who've had them for like five years. I mean, some people have them for the most of their life, but you know. <sighs> wow, that's that's rough. Yeah, no, mm. I had them for like two and a half years, and uh, I was so done. I could barely eat half the food that I wanted to eat. Mm. Um, and every time they would like tighten them, like you couldn't eat for the next day because the world, like it was pain. Mm. Everything was pain. Mm. They're they're not they're <laughs> not great. 
they're not they're not great they didn't release a mist of calvin klein for teeth no they didn't hmm. no they didn't but that probably been nice though they also one of so they have to put like these weird um sort of rings on the back of your teeth when they when they put put braces on you and um when you're done they have to like take them off and one of mine got stuck in my tooth like it wouldn't come out they had to like usually they don't have to like keep wrench my mouth open and keep it open to take it out but they had to like put like the weird thing in your mouth to keep it open Mm -hmm. and then they had to like bring in like bigger sort of plier things and like rip it out of my tooth yeah it, that's fun it, it was it was it was weird <laughs> like they had to do it so they had to do it slowly they had to like put in some kind of chemical to like loosen the stuff that they used mm-hmm. to keep it in there in the first place and they had to like hammer it out and then finally rip it out when it was loose enough it was a process Jeez. well there goes the squeamish part of our audience. <laughs> I mean, that's not even like there was no blood or gore. <laughs> My tooth is still fine. I think. That you think. Yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, are you we sure? We had to we had to extract two of my teeth cuz they were still milk teeth and they didn't want those teeth to fall off. Um in the middle of of the braces like the, mm. the process so i had to get two of my teeth extracted Jeez. before we and wait for the others to grow out before we could start the work on my teeth it was a long Jeez. process sounds like it it was a long process but eventually uh but if, but eventually uh Okay, back to The Simpsons. Then. Yes, back to The Simpsons. Away Let's from get away braces. From... Let's yes. get away from braces. Yes. Oh, God. All right. Um, but mm-hmm. let me think. Okay. Were the songs that Lisa was singing references to something that I did not get because I am not old enough? <laughs> I think so. I, I don't think I'm old enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> To know what that's a reference to, if it is a reference, I don't think it is. I think they just made that up. Okay, for the I wasn't episode. sure. I mean, there's a ton of references in this. Oh yeah, in this episode. I bet. Again, this if this is like 1993, then this is references from before I was born. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. So I well, barely I mean... got any of them. Did you get the Grinch reference? Yes, I did. Okay, good. We were, I was worried about that. Did you get the Grinch reference? Well, I mean, you know, I don't know what you've seen. That's fair. No, that's fair. Um, it's a really good reference, though. Yes. He, yeah. See, the early Simpsons were great at reference jokes. Mm-hmm. Because they would put that, just that little spin on it. That right. That made it. That even if you didn't, you know, get the reference, it'd be hilarious. Right. Like, um, I'm sure you didn't get um, when Lisa gets her braces on, the the bad ones. And she's like, give me the mirror. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty sure it was referenced to something. Right. But you didn't get it, but it was still funny, right? It was still funny, yeah. Yeah. What was it a reference to? It was a reference to the 1980s, uh, what was it, 1990s Batman movie. Oh. I doubt you've seen that. No, I have not seen that. Yeah, the one with Michael Keaton. Yeah, no, I have not seen that. Oh, well, it's when the Joker, it's his face. Anyway, anyway, yeah, I mean, that that's like the big strength of early Simpsons. Is right taking these references and making them 
either putting him in there as a smart joke, like, you know, a, sm- a smarty pants joke for smarty pants because all the writers are, you know, Harvard graduates. <laughs> they put in they put in a ton of like math jokes in there. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, if you go back and look at the Simpsons, and there's like a math problem, you can probably be a hundred percent sure that that's a reference. That's that's some math joke that some Harvard graduate <laughs> knew of somehow. Of course, of course, a math joke but, by a math man. Yeah, exactly. Woman, math person. I don't think there were many women writers at the time. Mm. In fact, I'm pretty sure there were none. Oh my god! There was the there was the showrunners like Al Jean and Mike Reese who were who pretty much made The Simpsons what it was back in the day. Right. At least where they were they were the big creative heads at the time. Then they had their big group of writers in one room oh, with no. a uh, waffle stuck to the ceiling. Yep. Somehow. Yep. Then you had the intern, Conan O'Brien. You know who Conan is, right? Nope. No? You don't know who Conan O'Brien is? Nope. In the Conan O'Brien show? Oh, okay, yeah. I know I know big, of big I tall know dude. of him, yes. <laughs> okay. Well he was a writer on The Simpsons. Oh, okay. He was like he was like the intern and they, they stuck him in a closet, I think. <laughs> And then you had John Schwartzwelder who wrote some of the best jokes on The Simpsons. He had his own mm-hmm. office which with a bunch of weird stuff and he would never talk to anybody. How much of this is derisive and sarcastic and how much of this is actual truth? None. <laughs> None is derisive or sarcastic. Okay, everything is actual truth. Okay. I mean, I've listened to a lot of the commentaries from the DVDs. Oh. Which are pretty fun and funny, and they they do talk about like the, they did have a waffle on the ceiling in the writers' room. Amazing. Conan, while working on other things, would just sit in a room and he wrote um, a few episodes for mm. them. And John Schwartzwalder did have a office with some weird stuff in it, and nobody really knew anything about him at the time. So he was just there. So. Yeah, kinda, yeah. You know, he he's a strange man. He <laughs> appears a lot in the show, like mm. in, as a background extra, right? Because he he's he's just kind of a weird figure. <laughs> From what they described of him, I've never I've never actually heard him talk. So, why does Lisa and Bart not have hair? They do. Then why is it yellow? It okay. So here's the reason, Maria. So Matt Groening, who created the show, uh-huh. okay, he was gonna pitch a show to James L. Brooks, who's a big time producer over at Fox. Okay. All right. Matt was gonna originally pitch his original his original comic, Life in Hell. Okay. It's about this weird one eared bunny rabbit going through situations okay but he realized he didn't want to sell the rights to it because if he did he wouldn't be able to make life in hell comics anymore okay because fox would own it so in the waiting room right before his meeting with james l brooks the legend goes according to him he grabbed like a napkin or something and and doodled the simpsons characters on it oh jeez in like five minutes and then presented that to James L. Brooks as a you know a family sitcom. Oh. Mm. That yeah. wow. So he just mm-hmm. made them up in the waiting room? Oh that that's the that's so the legend goes. I mean he based them off of himself and his family. Yeah, I see. So yeah. And a few of the Simpsons characters are references to his life. Oh. But, um, yeah. The So the Legend Goes. So the Legend Goes. I see. That's kind of funny. It is pretty funny. It yeah. is it's, it's very funny. Um, <laughs> wow. 
Yeah, if I had to come up with an idea in a, in a, in a waiting room, it would just be a napkin that was on fire. <laughs> I don't even have matches. I don't know. Somehow I, I managed to, to light it on fire. <laughs> don't would that know. show run as long as The Simpsons says? No. <laughs> no, sir. Oh, God. Um, yeah. And then what most people don't know about The Simpsons is that it wasn't originally picked up as a full show. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was originally a short uh, segment on the Tracy Ullman show, which is a show that existed at one point starring a woman named Tracy Ullman, and that's the extent of all I know about it. (laughs) Okay. But um, yeah, the original show was animated by our good by our old friends from Rocket Power, Klasky Shuplo. Ah, great. Yeah, that's why the uh, opening sequence looks so weird. Weird and wonky, yeah. Yeah, because Klasky Shuplo uh, did the animation for the Tracy Ullman shorts in the first two seasons of The Simpsons. Oh, okay. It take them for. God damn ever to actually replace that original <laughs> original sequence. <laughs> uh but anyway, that's that's the rough origins of the Simpsons. Hmm. It's still going, right? Yep. How? I I I I I honestly couldn't tell you at this point. Like like has the quality deferred? Or yes, yes, it has. The quality is very deferred. Okay, has it it's, degraded it's, or is it? It is degraded. Okay. Many folds. I see. Like the there's not there has not been a, uh, a an episode with the quality of Last Exit to Springfield in a long time. Mm, okay. Is that to say that most of the new episodes are bad? I mean, a lot of people say that after season 10 is when you should stop watching. Right. But there's some good episodes in there. Hmm. Yeah, it's not It's not all crap. Eventually, it gets to be pretty crappy. I mean, at some you point, you want to, like, even if it's a sitcom, you want to stop at a good point and then keep it that way, right? Like... Go to right. a high point and then stop there. Quit while you're ahead, essentially. Right. Um, I guess one of the big issues is that The Simpsons has never had real lasting continuity for right. the show. And shows like um, Bob's Burgers, which is also on Fox, mm-hmm. has that continuity, that the callback jokes that they can come back to and it you feel like the series is progressing right whereas back in the 90s you know static sitcoms were what was the formula right right so you know this and the simpsons has never really progressed past that yeah i mean there's a yeah I, I I can see I can see that, but I mean, still you might want, you you still want to like stop at some point, right? <laughs> right. Like either yeah, way, no, it's that. going to be an abrupt stop if you don't have continuity. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Might as or you well, can just keep going. Or you just keep going. Yeah. I mean, it's a little, it's a little, it's a it's a it's a slippery slope. It's slippery. It's either you keep exactly. going forever until the end of time, or mm-hmm. you just stop abruptly. Basically, yeah. Um, which I mean, not a bad idea. <laughs> like just, <laughs> just, just stop and be done with it. You know, hmm. have like a mega it, episode or something like that, and then just done. Close the chapter. Just, Close the book. Let somebody else take a crack at The Simpsons. Yeah. With a reboot or something. Yeah. Yeah. They might actually work if they just rebooted the whole damn thing. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, I don't know how 
and or in what way the the show has changed but yeah. you know there's a few things that have changed with it but not a lot right and I guess that's why people are still watching it. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. People are still watching, I suppose, then they would still be cranking stuff out. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe they're just watching for the brand. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Who knows? But, but you know. Anyway, yep. what were you saying? Not really. Nothing really. That's it was a fun episode. It was. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Um never seen it. I've always heard of it. <laughs> I've never actually seen uh, it. Yeah, we'll we'll probably go back to the Simpsons well every now and then. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun episode. It, it's a, it's a fun yeah. fun I always like comedies that that have sort of real life references. Where where they'll reference stuff that's happening in the world right now, in the mm-hmm. in the show. Like it's always nice to see that. At least I enjoy that kind of comedy. Rather than well, that can be a slippery slope, though. Why? Well, I mean, have you ever seen Family Guy? I have. I have not seen much of it. Well, you know, it's a whole show based upon references. Yeah, I mean, not, like, just pour in a bucket load just because you can. <laughs> obviously, you want to be... Just because you have nothing else. Yeah, obviously, you want to be smart about it. But but it's nice to see it when it's done well, I suppose. And it's not, mm-hmm. like... Just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> right. There has to be some idea behind it. Yeah, it's kind of like if... Kind of like how some shows get really overboard when they're allowed to use curses. No, oh, like just because you can doesn't mean that every next every sentence that your character says needs to involve cursing. Yes, you know. But we can say the f word, so why shouldn't we? Again, uh, again just because you can doesn't mean you should. But the the right sort of balance is is nice. Mm-hmm. And in a way that even people... I mean, like the Simpsons, Simpsons does, right? Like there's so many references that I n- don't know. But I'm pretty sure it might be a reference to something. Mm-hmm. But it it doesn't... Like it doesn't pull away from the the enjoyment of the show, basically. Right, they're woven into yeah, the joke. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't disconnect you from the show, or you know. Mm. They're not stopping the sh- the plot. Yeah, it's to, to make, make a, a joke. reference. Yeah, to make a reference, exactly. No, every, the jokes are woven into the plot and what's happening to the characters at that moment. Exactly. Which is what makes them fun. Yeah, and it was what makes them like funny and, and like you mm-hmm. you appreciate it. You know, because yep. there's a subtlety involved. Like I enjoyed, like e- even with The Simpsons, I think it, I enjoyed especially because they they go all the way to just to like flip it around. So when Burns and <laughs> Smithers are going down to the to to where the button is to turn off yes. the power plant, like they go through this elaborate process, and then there's just like a damn screen door right there that's broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. And like dogs are getting in and whatnot, and it's it's hilarious. It's just like you literally yeah. have. You know what? Forget it. Forget it. Never mind. Yeah, there's a big theme of of um, deflating the the uh, gravitas in The Simpsons. I think, um, like the at the beginning of the episode, they're talking about like they have this union 
and it's important. And then they all just trade it away for a keg of beer. Exactly. Like there's there's a real like point of showing something is important and then showing how it's not. Exactly. Or deflating yeah. that importance. So like when um, Burns is sort of going away in the helicopter and then he just falls out. Right, exactly, yes. He's, a, he's this menacing man. He has his own helicopter and then he just falls out of it. <laughs> showing, showing a kind of, you know, a humanity even in the most inhuman people. Exactly. It's, it's, just, it's just very well choreographed and and written out um Mm -hmm. it was it was good i enjoyed it yes do you have anything else oh yeah and the the, yeah one more one Uh more thing is that at the very beginning with the uh the arnold schwarzenegger parody yes it's a it's a possible thing where there's a there's a whole bunch of these like strung around the seasons Mm -hmm. Of this McBain movie. And they might all be the same movie. Uh Uh-huh. There's like one movie and you just see like this string of unconnected scenes Scenes with this character. Uh Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a Simpsons theory. I see. Because, yeah. Yeah, it's weird having just at the beginning this just random Arnold Schwarzenegger esque looking dude shoot up a bunch of people. Also, what was that thing? I mean, I never watched The Simpsons, so I didn't really pay much attention. But what was the thing Mm -hmm. where people were freaking out that The Simpsons was predicting the future? Oh God, I've seen those. Those are so stupid. They're so dumb. (laughs) They're so stupid. If you're if you're the person that clicked on the the ten times the Simpsons predicted the future, well, I didn't because I never watched the damn oh, no, thing, no, and then it was I'm, like I'm looking at the audience. Ah, I see. Uh, you are probably one of the people who was convinced. It was so I'm, weird. I mean, I guess they did quote unquote predict the Trump presidency. <laughs> quote unquote. Or they were just being cynical, and then it just happened, and they were like, well, Mm -hmm. shit, I guess, I guess we did, yay. Better than what happened to South Park. (laughs) Anyway, um, that it? Yeah, what are we watching next time, James? Oh, uh, we are going back to Netflix. Ooh. We're getting our streaming hats on. Ooh. We're streaming some She-Ra. Oh, yeah. Yes, we're watching She-Ra. It's great. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love that show. To prepare for the movie night. Yes. What are we watching for movie night? Shrek. Oh, but the, why are we watching? Why does She-Ra? What does She-Ra have to do with Shrek? Well, I wanted to watch something good. So I picked She-Ra, ah. produced by DreamWorks, oh, which also okay. made Shrek. I see. That's where the circle is. See, All right. see the tenuous connections? It was a stretch, but okay. Yeah. We're, Look. We're watching Shrek. I need something, goddammit. We're watching Shrek for Movie Night in Hell. Uh, yeah, um, I'll talk about it. I watched a lot of Shrek when I was a child. Um... Okay. And yeah, um, if you would like to support us, please leave a like or a comment if you're watching on YouTube or leave us a review if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or you can even, if you're downloading our podcasts off of the website, which is chaoticsilly.squarespace.com, then you can leave a like or a comment down there as well. Um, And if you're feeling particularly generous, you could give us a dollar every month and you get access to our um, Patreon podcast, uh, Movie Night in Hell, where James and I talk about animated movies instead of TV shows, uh, except for July, where everything is free. Because it's Christmas in July. Woo. Yay. What did you? What do you rate this episode, Maria? What do you, um, probably a 
probably like a we, three, we forgot to do that. three and a half. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Three and yeah, a half. Yeah, and this was, it was fun. It was a fun episode. I enjoyed it. Yeah, very fun. Very fun. Mm. That's it. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.